Same thing that has happened to me at every job I've ever had. I show up about five minutes earlier than the gate will open. I don't understand this. I want to get to work. And I have to sit here and look at what I want to do on the other side of the fence. Let's see. 6.59. I got 60 more seconds before I can pop this gate open with my car. First person at the marina. set up. Tomorrow morning I'm going to start sanding. Every year or every three years depending on what kind of paint you use and what kind of sailor you are, you do your bottom. I made a mistake last year when I did this. No, this is two years ago that I did this. And I didn't sand this. I sanded it with not enough I should have sanded it with 120 or 180, and I was way up in the 500. So the paint didn't stick. I'm gonna fix that right here. And then I'm gonna put a blade adhesive on, and we'll go into detail what that is, and I'll show you different versions of it. But essentially, it protects the fiberglass, and it makes it so plant life can't grow on the boat. My boat's actually, I know it looks weird from different angles with the camera, but when you run your hand on it, it's actually really smooth. So this isn't going to be a, fat, a hard project at all. I'm going to hit it once with 120 and then paint it. Buy a sailboat, they said. Travel around the world, they said. It'll be easy. No. <laughs> no, actually, um, this is actually really going, going very well. I have, at um, this point, I have done the bottom paint twice. This is my third time and since I've owned the boat. And when I bought the boat, the guy hadn't done it in four, three or four years, so it really, really needed it. 
and I had to do a lot of detail and work through sanding at different levels. Right now I'm just, I'm gonna be blue for a few days. <laughs> so right now I'm just hitting, I'm hitting it with 120 grit. The point of this is just to take off anything that's loose and to make a good surface for the next coat of a bladed paint to go on. I'm also gonna address a, f a few sanding concerns while I'm going through this, for instance. I'm gonna spend a lot of time in this area right here and hand sand in here because of all the shells. This will explain kind of how this paint works. So this paint comes off very easily, you know, flakes off during the year to make it so algae can't grow on it. And as you can see, the front gets the most, you know, water passing over it. So this wears away faster. And I know that when you look at it on film, I've watched enough of these videos to know that when you look at it on film, it doesn't, it looks like there's something wrong with this boat. But when you wipe it with your hand, it's, it's just at the right grit where it'll grab paint. And it's smooth enough that there's no, you know, I don't even have to ferret because there's no bumps in the hull. So it's just gonna be a quick sanding and a quick painting. And then I gotta address this. That's gonna be different, some kind of different work. All right, it's the morning of the third day that I'm working on this boat. Essentially, I'm at the point where I need to just wipe it down and then tape and add paint. And that's my goal for today. Now, every time I've done this before, I use a paint that's $63 per, per uh, quart. And I use two quarts. <clears throat> this time, my, my boat, this time the boat may be in the water for several years without coming back out. And I'm going to use a different paint. Essentially, I spent 300 bucks on a gallon of a blade of paint. Same kind of paint, but it's a multi-layer, multi-year ablative paint. Okay. So I'm going to put that on. And then I'm going to redo some of the stripe. If I can find the paint to match, I'll redo that. Otherwise, I'll do it a different color if I can't find the right paint. But I'll redo that. Then we're going to get it in the water. And start working on all the other projects to get this thing to be an off-grid home. Um, I need to add solar. I need to add wind. I need to add a better house battery. Um, refrigeration. Uh, right now it's running off of a cooler, but I'm going to fix that. I need a refrigerator in here. So it's going to be a, a detailed season where we're actually going to work on a boat the entire time. And then once we're almost got it to where it's ready, we're going to head down the Mississippi to the Tennessee River. And probably park this boat at Cuba Landing for a few months while I spend some time in the houseboat for maybe four, three or four months, and then jump back on the sailboat and head out down to the Gulf and out to the Bahamas for a few months. So that's kind of the plan. It may take one full season, one more full season to do that, where I don't leave in August this year, but I leave in August next year. Um, we'll see. I'm gonna try my hardest to leave here. I'm trying, I've actually reached out to a few people to see if I can get some crew. So that might. That might make me, if I got people locked down for this August or saying they need a year to prepare to take off a month, I might wait. And I'll let you guys know when I know more about that. But my plan is to act as if I'm leaving in August with this boat and to get the electrical so it's off-grid and it'll run off a generator and to get the motor to run at such a 
a quiet level that my cat doesn't freak out and hide in the front of the boat like she does currently. So I'm not going to do sailing this year. I'm actually not even going to put the mast on the boat this year. This boat, um, the whole goal of this year is to drive it around on the 50 year old, 52 year old motor and make sure everything's perfect with it the whole season before I start heading down river with it. Um, yeah. So there won't be, I'll tell you right now, the only sailing that you'll see on this season will be me and someone else's boat. I might join a racing crew just to get my sailing fixed. Um, or I might go on a couple of races and show you a few episodes of that. Either way, I'll get some sailing in myself. I'm not sure it's going to be part of this part of this season. It's basically going to be boat work. Turning this thing into the perfect off-grid home. Now, some people might be looking up here and seeing the blue along here and being worried about that. I am too, I don't like seeing it, but if you wipe that down with a little acetone, it comes right off. The reason I'm not touching it now or dealing with it now as part of this cleanup process is because if you add any water to this whole process, it starts to be gummy and sappy and impossible to get this paint off. I'm not recommending this paint. This is the first year I'm using it, but I want everyone to know what I'm using. Odyssey Multi-System Ablutative Bottom Paint. Multi-season, I'm sorry. I can feel it calling in the air tonight. Oh, Lord. And I've been waiting for this moment for all of my life. So I'm done with the bottom paint. And I'm gonna pull the tape off a little later today. Put the tape up for the stripe. Gotta move forward. <laughs> but it always looks good with fresh bottom paint. So you can actually see, I can feel it. There's a lip right here from how thick this paint is. Right there. And then you certainly cannot, you can't feel that. So now I gotta do the striping.
So today is launch day. I'm gonna put my boat in the water today. Um, everyone always gets pretty nervous, somewhat nervous, unless they don't care about their boat, when it gets transferred up onto the crane and onto the lift and then into the water. Nothing ever happens. I mean, if you Google something, you could find it, but nothing really ever happens. This boat is, was made in 1972. It was actually built in 1971 and sold as a 1972 in California from Richard Finch designed and built it. It is a Islander, it's a sloop, and the Islander class later became the Bahamas, so the Bahama class. Um, so when, when you have an Islander, it only was an Islander for three or four years and then it became a different boat. So people who know them, know them. People who owned them, always jump out and say something to me when I go by. But having said that, it's been in and out of the water. It went, it was sold directly to Lake Superior in Minnesota. It, uh, its home was in Duluth. So it's been in and out of the water, in fresh water for 50 times. So it's not anything really to be concerned about. However, we're going to stay here, we're going to paint everything that's been sitting on the ground or on the stands once it's in the slings, I'm going to paint that and then once we get in the water we'll start the motor and get the battery charged up and kind of go from there. I have two brutal blemishes that I don't, I'm so pissed about right here and right here. And it was, there were little pieces of tape that still had kind of, I mean, tiny little pieces of tape. And I just started picking at them with my finger to get them off. And they had a little bit of wet paint on them. And my finger made this mark. And you can actually see the how small the tape is. It's right there. I just stopped going after it. So what I'm going to do, basically I'm going to put tape along here and I'm going to sand this to get rid of that mark. <laughs> Both of them. And when I pressure wash, that might come off too. So we'll see. But that's frustrating. And it was my doing. Like I was watching it happen as I was doing it. <laughs> my other frustration. This, this is just barely into the stripe here. The water stripe. So I'm going to sacrifice a small part of the water stripe here to just do a bottom paint. This is all underwater, so you don't see it, but I don't like, you know, I don't like that I have, I'm having to do that. So if you look, the stripe is coming along right here. So we're basically notching this little window out of it. Um, and that's because I don't, I'm not going to be in the sling overnight. Imagine being this boat, and it's already 52 years old. It's been doing its thing on the Great Lakes for this long, and now I'm going to take it all the way down the entire country, out into the Gulf of Mexico, on this huge, long journey. Oh, this boat does not know what's coming for it. So he just made it wider. Dogs right there make it wider or narrower. That's so cool. So Andrew's driving the forklift. Mike's the guy in charge over there, and then I don't know the name of the new guy over there yet.
Now it's locked on the cradle and the forklift is going to pick it up. Look at that. So my boat weighs just under 10,000 pounds. Without anything. And it's pretty loaded right now, so. The transformation that this boat has gone through over the last three years is amazing. When I bought it for $5,000, the motor didn't work. It leaked gas and oil. The gas and the oil was just sitting in the bottom of the boat. It smelled so horrible you couldn't be in the boat. All the wood was damaged along the whole port side from a leak, um, from a crash that had hit the side of it. So I had to, it took me two years of fixing the inside and the boat just to stop the leaks on the boat. After that, two years I was able to actually go through and start fixing the outside and painting the outside and making everything look good and for the first time while the boat looked good and was shiny and polished I actually took my best friend out to spend the day on the boat for the first time he was complimenting me about the boat he was saying I see what you're doing I see how beautiful this boat is I see how it's an amazing classic boat um, and that was really the first time in three years that someone was actually complimenting the boat on our way back into the dock, a two or three hundred thousand dollar 41 foot Beneteau was coming by. Both Seth and I were staring at it, thinking how beautiful a boat it was. And the guy looks over to me and he says, Beautiful boat. He goes, Great boat. <laughs> and I looked over at Seth in the moment that that compliment from that guy was sinking in. Seth said, Your boat's like the 1965 Mustang at an all new Ferrari show, and everybody's lined up around the Mustang and they appreciate it. And I thought, that's exactly what I was looking for. That's what I'm going for. I wanted to own a classic boat, and that's what this boat needed. It needed someone to take care of it, to pay attention to it, and to love it. Have you been here the whole time? As long as I've been here, yeah. How much can it carry? I know it's lifted 70-some thousand. We, re we reverse engineer and rated it for 40-some thousand just to be on the safe side, plus our uh, our actual piece of equipment that we haul stuff with is rated for 40. Okay, so, so you're never going to get We don't like going over that. If we do, then we have to caster everything, and it's a giant thing. Okay. When Jim was, used to be here, he had a 63-foot Sea Ray. He had uh, um, he had a Hatteras. He had a bunch of big stuff. And that was coming in and out? Yeah, he used to pick with that, too. Um, so you could do... A little bit bigger boat if you were hanging it just in the slings, but you just don't want to put it on equipment. Like if someone came for a through haul, yeah. okay. Yeah. But you just that would be a lot to work on the crane to do it. Right. How old is the crane? No idea. More than fifty? I would think. Okay, that's yeah. awesome. And it it wasn't it wasn't here right from the beginning, but it, the guy who used to have this place, I think in the seventies, put this up. Okay. Right around when my boat was manned. Yeah. 72. Okay. And it's been in the Great Lakes the whole time, so it's come out every single year. Yeah. It's cool. I mean, we restrung cable and everything for our lifting cables. Um, we're starting to, starting to see a couple little twists coming out of you can find between, stuff. between, the, between the, the outer stranding, the inner strand is going. 
and then all of a sudden you'll see them pop out through the side and it's like at that point it's all done to shut it off and is that like a 30 or 40 year thing or is that like a 10 year thing or I just think, when you see it? I think the last time it was done was like in the 80s. Oh god. Okay. Well, it's money spent and then you use the hell out of it for a long, long time. Right, right. <laughs> and then we, you know, I brought somebody in to string it and then we also pulled and uh, inspected all of our uh, boom cables too. Oh. Yeah, uh, yeah, there's a lot going on with this thing. Yep. And then it's cool that it has its own house to drive it. Just yeah. park. And then not only that, it's a riverfront view house. Right. <laughs> right? <laughs> How much would that cost just to live in that little... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> little Millions yeah. of dollars though, right? Million dollar piece of yeah. space right now. With the windows facing the right direction and everything. <laughs> so you guys, notice how that strap, that's really cool. They tie the straps together. On yeah, some boats you do that, but you don't have to on every boat, right? Not on every boat. A lot of times we do it just to make sure there's no sleepers. Certain, certain if I'm recording, I'm recording, it's insured. If you could make it happen, I would become a, like a YouTube star. <laughs> <laughs> just get the guys out of the way, though. <laughs> yeah. Just under 10,000 pounds, just moving around like it's nothing. This whole crane, it just it doesn't matter if you're lifting 10,000 or 40,000. It's, it's same the same RPM, same, same way, yeah. same nothing. It yeah. doesn't care. That's really cool. That's just the right piece of equipment. Right. At the bottom of the keel. Alright, so. So on my boat, it's real slick and there's not much to stop the strap, so they tie it to stop it from slipping. I know taking this 50 year old boat all the way down the Mississippi and the Tennessee River into the Gulf of Mexico to the Bahamas and eventually through the Panama Canal up the California coast and through British Columbia and into Alaska it's something that will become so overwhelming and so scary to me and each step of it is something I can't even imagine doing right now while I'm sitting here but my goal is to just fix what needs to be fixed, add what needs to be added, and get along, get on my way. And just worry about today. Don't worry about six months from now. Just worry about today. And in the last three years, I've learned to sail. I've learned to work this boat. I've learned to work the waterways. I know what I'm doing. So I just got to do it. Come on, old girl. I had to give it just a little bit. I had to kick the gas up just a little bit. I always baby it. I don't know why. I baby it too much. It's totally rebuilt. I gotta stop acting like it's a baby. Alright, I'm gonna open up the uh, engine and get some water running through here. Before I rebuilt this motor, it would just dump gas out of here. It was just gas. Like, it would never burn all the gas. Like, all the sailboats that are 40 years old in the marina that haven't been rebuilt. It's just get like a puddle of gas follows them everywhere they go. And now look at that, nothing but exhaust. It's perfect. This is awesome. I don't have to call for the bridge. I don't have to have my radio on. I don't have to turn my siren on. The river's gonna get scared. I don't understand cars driving over us, Dad. I just don't get it. We got a good breeze going. Uh, probably seven or eight mile an hour wind that we're heading into. Nothing big though. My goal is to take it out on the breakwater and then I'm gonna organize the lines and move the dinghy. I need the dinghy to be on the other side of the boat to get into my dock. So I'll move the dinghy. And I'll set up the, I'll put the buoys on the side. 
on the port side and the lines on the port side. So I'll show you guys how I dock. I dock single-handedly, which means I come in, the way I do it is I come in and I jump and I put a uh, line on the back to pull the boat in and then I worry about the front after I'm already connected. everybody put a like put a comment subscribe if you haven't i appreciate it cricket appreciates it and river appreciates it this is going to be a fun adventure i definitely want you guys to come along for the ride thanks for watching see you guys shortly i'm not going to do episodes just every week i'm going to do episodes every project they're going to be a little shorter and there's going to be a lot more of them so i'll see you more often